to yet another episode of the English series. My name is Pooja Tivedi. Today we are going to discuss the primary agriculture credit societies. What are these? What is their contribution in the agriculture sector? Other than that, why are we discussing it? Of course, from the perspective of GS mains paper second and third, it is important to understand all this. So first of all, let us look at the news piece. Now the union budget has announced rupees 2,516 crore for digitization of 63,000 primary agriculture credit society. This will be a time bound period that is to be done in the next five years. And it will bring greater transparency as well as accountability in their operations, enabling them to diversify their business and also undertake more activities. And of course, if they will undertake more activities, more connectivity, and more inclusiveness of services which can be given to the agricultural society will also get enhanced right moving ahead this will uh, the states will also work on model bylaws for these societies states would be expected to emulate even as it is it is planned to rejuvenate defunct societies which have kept uh, which are the kept target for this is setting up of 3 lakh pscs across the country okay so these all are preliminary facts the project comprises of development of a cloud-based common software so that connectivity, transparency, accountability is all there. When the cloud computing system will work, the political interference will also get curbed because now you will be accountable for what you are putting into your software. Cyber security and data storage are the prime importance in this cloud system. It will also provide hardware support to the packs such as computers, CPUs, other important infrastructure that is needed. Digitization of existing records will happen including maintenance, support and training. So upskilling of employees will also be done. Okay. Moving on, now if we talk about PACs, what are these? Gra this, these are ground level cooperative credit institutions. Okay. And they work from the root, roots of the uh, agricultural society. They provide short term, medium term agriculture loans the they will do so to the farmers they will give the loans to the farmers for various agriculture and farming activities okay and they are grassroots because they work with the gram panchayat and that is done at village level the first ever pac was established in the year 1904 and the major retail outlets for short term and medium term credit to rural sector pacs are okay so you have to remember the functions of it. What are the objectives? First of all, to raise capital for the purpose of making loans so that farmers do not go to informal sectors such as money lenders who can exploit them. Other than that, to collect deposits from the members so that saving habits can also be generated. To supply agriculture input and services to members at reasonable prices so that agriculture sector food security can also be enhanced. To arrange for the supply and development of improved breeds of livestock for members. So these all are important preliminary fact. If it is ever asked, you can easily answer this. Moving ahead. Now to make, uh, it is also expected PAC to make all necessary arrangement for improving irrigation on the land owned by the members. To encourage various income generating activities through supply of necessary inputs and services. So that uh, seasonal unemployment can be curved because agriculture is pretty seasonal in nature. What are the significance of PACs? First of all, they are multifunctional organizations. They do not just work for the cropping system, but they give banking, on-site supplies, marketing produce and consumer goods trading as well. They work as mini banks, providing loans as well as accepting deposit. They also have counters to provide agriculture inputs and consumer goods. They also provide warehousing services to the farmers so that the farmers can be rest assured of the fact that they have somewhere to go with whatever they have produced. Moving on, now PACs account for 41% of the Kisan credit card loans given by all the entities of the country. 95% of these KCC loans were done through PACs. These are two small and marginal farmers. This is a very good thing because if the big farmers, affluent farmers, uh, you know, are given the higher percentage of loans. What happens? That the actual target of small and marginal farmers are swept away. So this is also really good. 
Now, why are they attractive? First of all, they provide last mile connectivity for what they offer by providing so many services. They also have the capacity to extend credit with minimal paperwork, which other commercial banks don't do. Many times it has been recorded that the commercial banks have a tedious work with respect to the paper. So the farmers, first of all, they are not excessively literate and also they do not want to go through that entire journey. So this, uh, so what happens that they get uh, disheartened uh, when it is a talk of going to the commercial bank for loans. But we talk about our PACs. This is a beautiful arrangement that less paperwork is there. It, uh, the strength in numbers say that as most of the paperwork is taken care of by the office bearers of the PACs, so that's a good thing. Moving on, while SCBs and BCCBs, these are connected to the core banking software, scheduled commercial banks and others, PACs are not. So they do not have a proper software. Some PACs have their own software, but a compatible platform is necessary to bring out uniformity in the system. And once there is a uniformity, it is much easier to set standards for the PACs to abide by. All right. Moving on, the need is, of course, when we are talking about PACs, they are not digitized in nature. Not many of them. In, in, I can say safely, almost all of them are not digitized. Some are. Okay. So they are still functioning manually, which is resulting into inefficiency and defunctioning of these PACs. There is no uniformity in the software being used by them and they are not interconnected with the BCCBs and STCBs. Also, in order to bring the PACs on a common platform at the national level, it is important that cloud computing system is given to them. They have a call uh, to have uh, to make them have a common accounting system as well. So that again, standards can be given and loan advancement procedure as well as deposit deposition uh, procedure of it can be uh, followed very smoothly all right moving on now if we talk about what where is computerization needed see only few such as the maharashtra state cooperative bank has plans to directly lend to pacs in districts where the dccbs are either financially weak or have lost their banking license in these areas it is needed in such a scenario computerization of the pacs would help because it is important to understand which PACs are going because of the political structure of uh, the PACs itself, which ones are going into a loss with respect to non performing assets and which can be restored. So, it is important. Okay. Other issues first of all, if we talk about coverage, it's not very uh, inclusive in nature. Specifically, if we talk about the northeastern area, PACs are not very have not proliferated in the way it has in the northern and central India. They also have inadequate resources, specifically if we talk about the short term and medium term lending, they do not have much resources. Other than that, they also have limited credit. Firstly, the PACs provide credit only to a small population and even in that small uh, loan system, most of the coverage is by crop finance, like the seasonal ones. So, in order to tackle this problem of seasonal unemployment, they also need more finance so that they can invest in other sectors as well in the village area and of course the other regions they can and they have invested in its digging of wells installation of pump sets etc very conventional there are also overdues now due to the circulation of loanable funds it has been reduced the the pacs reduce the borrowing as well as lending okay because too much loan has been given this gives them the bad image of societies of defaulting debtor as will, uh, these are willful. Big landowners, they take undue advantage of their relatively strong position through political pressure. Political compunctions generally, they triumph over the fiscal discipline because when, it, when this happens, the recovery of loans is hit. A big landowner has a political connection. Now that political connection will pressurize the PAC not to recover loan from that big landowner. So this is a problem. Chairpersons of PACs, they participate in electing the office bearers of the BCCBs and political affiliation for that very reason is important here. Now a report published by the RBI on December 27, 2022, number of PACs are at 1.02 lakh. 
also at the end of March 2021, only 47,297 of them were in profit. The same report said PACs had reported lending worth rupees more than 1 lakh crore, in which NPAs of rupees 72,550 crore is there, and Maharashtra has 20,897 PAC, of which 11,326 are in losses. All right. Moving on, let's just conclude to the fact that, first of all, uh, it is important to set a computerized standard for PACs because agriculture sector is the uh, has a lot of way to cover when it comes to funding. And if farmer bills, etc., if any bill that is introduced for our agricultural system is opposed right now, the environment might not be suitable for any sort of reform right now. So we can start with smaller reforms and these reforms will take us in a uh, to the right direction in the right direction in a long term okay so that's it thank you so much for watching